Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Over my years of Bible study, I have looked at different Christian doctrines and how they relate to scripture, one of which is the idea that Jesus Christ and God Almighty are kind of the same person, they're equal and stuff like that. But I've never really been able to use the scriptures to prove that idea. In fact, I've actually found many places that disprove that idea. And in this video, I want to share with you some of my findings. I'll be giving you 15 proofs that Jesus Christ is in fact not God Almighty. That is, they are not equal and they are not the same person either. So let's get right into it. The first proof is the fact that if Jesus Christ is the Son and God Almighty is the Father, then they can't be equal because as the Bible says, a son honoreth his father. If you read Malachi chapter 1 verse 6, if you honor somebody, then it wouldn't make sense for you to be equal with that person. And secondly, if we assumed for a moment that there were actually three persons in one God, then I think the Bible describing one as a father and another as a son wouldn't really make a whole lot of sense because it wouldn't convey the right idea. So therefore, the idea that Jesus and God are equal doesn't make sense if one is the father and then the father is supposed to be get the son. The second proof is just looking at John chapter 14 verse 28 because it conveys the exact opposite message. Let's read it together. Ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If ye loved me, ye would rejoice because I said, I go unto the Father. For my Father is greater than I. I mean, <laughs> I don't know what else to say, right? How can Jesus be equal with God, but then Jesus is saying, my Father is greater than I, right? So there's that little contradiction there. Proof number three, what happened when Jesus died? Because, you know, some people try to create a narrative to explain, okay, at the point that Jesus died, maybe his spirit left him and or this and that happened, which have no scriptural evidence. But if Jesus Christ is God, then when Jesus died, we can't say that God died. Like, that's a heretical uh, statement, right? God is always alive. He's all living, right? Because everybody's life is sustained by his own. If you read Acts chapter 17, verses 24 to 28. So God Almighty cannot die, obviously. So then Jesus can't be God if he died at some point, right? Because when Jesus died, he was no more. It wasn't that a part of him died and then a part of him stayed alive. We're going to talk about why that in itself also proves this um, doctrine wrong. But the fact of the matter is, Jesus Christ died, but God Almighty didn't. So therefore, they have to be separate people. My fourth proof is an extension of the third, but it's essentially that a lot of people talk about how maybe Jesus, his human body died, but then his soul went lived on and something like that to try to explain how God could quote unquote die, but still be alive at the same time. But the thing is, that doesn't make any sense because then Jesus Christ wouldn't have performed an atonement. Because the whole point of Jesus Christ being a ransom is the fact that Jesus gave his life, as the Bible says in Matthew chapter 20, verse 20, even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. So if Jesus Christ didn't actually die, or he died halfway or 75%, but he didn't actually die, then that's not an atonement because there has to be a life given, life for life, if you read Deuteronomy chapter 19, verse 21, so that Jesus Christ could actually atone for the sin of Adam and Eve, which is what the whole point was about, right? If you read Romans chapter 5, verses 12 to 19 and so on. So it doesn't really go with the laws of atonement that a life has to be given for the atonement to be made. Then my fifth proof is the fact that when Jesus Christ would say sometimes that God sent him, if Jesus is God and God is Jesus, then that statement would have no meaning because imagine if I tell you I set myself to do something. The statement would be nonsensical. It would have no actual meaning. So there are so many verses in the book of John and in other books where Jesus was distinguishing himself from his father. If we say they're the same, then all of those statements would not make any sense. My sixth proof is the fact that how could Jesus pray to himself? I made a whole video on this before on this same channel talking about the fact that it doesn't make any sense for Jesus to be God because if that were to be the case, then Jesus would be praying to himself. Jesus would be asking assistance from himself, right? Just imagine for a moment that you were actually doing that. It would make no sense at all. In Matthew chapter 26, verses 39 and 42, Jesus was actually praying to God Almighty 
who was a separate person, different from him, and he was asking him for assistance. Or in Matthew chapter 11, verses 25 and 26, when Jesus was thanking God for providing disciples from the lowly, people who were just normal people. He called them to serve at that high level. So Jesus was talking to himself. It would make no sense at all. The seventh proof is how could Jesus submit to himself? For example, John chapter 5 verse 30, Jesus said, I can of mine own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which hath sent me. Would that make any sense if Jesus was talking about himself? I sent myself, I'm not going to do mine own will, but the will of me. Then my eighth proof is how could Jesus exalt himself? If you read Philippians chapter 2, verses 9 and 10, Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and hath given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, and so on and so forth. If Jesus Christ is God, then how could it make sense that Jesus, you know, exalted himself? He gave himself glory. He gave himself honor. Then my ninth proof is looking at Psalm 110 verse 1. The Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Which Jesus Christ quoted in Matthew chapter 22 verses 43 to 44. Showing that of course it was talking about him. Now if God Almighty is telling Jesus, sit thou on my right hand. But then God is Jesus. Essentially what we're saying, Jesus told Jesus, sit thou on my right hand until I make my enemies, which is your enemies, right? Because the same person, your fools, like it doesn't really make sense. There has to be a distinction between God and Jesus Christ that God is telling his son, his subordinate, Jesus Christ, sit thou on my right hand. I've approved of what you've done until I make your enemies your footstool and then you'll be able to rule and so on and so forth. Then my 10th proof, how did Jesus crown himself as king of God's kingdom? If you read Psalm 21 verse 3, for thou preventest him with the blessings of goodness. That is, the psalmist was saying that God Almighty confronted or brought blessings of goodness to Jesus Christ and thou settest a crown of pure gold on his head. Would this make sense if Jesus crowned himself? Then my 11th proof is looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 24 to 28, where Paul was talking about how after Jesus Christ would finish ruling the kingdom, then he would hand the kingdom back to God, and then God would be all in all. Would this make sense if Jesus hands the kingdom back to himself? Nope. Then my 12th proof, if Jesus is actually God Almighty, would it make sense for Jesus to say, but of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. If Jesus is God, then that means Jesus would know. But he didn't, which means that they have to be you know, separate in some sense for this statement to make any sense. Then my 13th proof is actually looking at one of the biggest pillars of the uh, Trinity doctrine and similar ideas that uh, Jesus Christ is God and thus he's uncreated. That's simply not true. If you read John chapter 5 verse 26, Jesus Christ literally said, For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself. So this idea that they're co-eternal, like they're, they've the Holy Spirit, God Almighty, Jesus Christ, they've all been existing for eternity, then that contradicts this statement because there was once upon a time when God Almighty was all by himself and then he made Jesus Christ. And then Jesus Christ went on to create all the other things that we see in the world, the universe and everything. If you read Colossians chapter 1 verses 15 to 17, Ephesians chapter 3 verse 9 and other passages. Some people say that because Jesus created the world, that means he's God. No. Let's say, for example, you're a father and you give your son some money to set up a business. And then the son makes a great success of that business. Can someone say, you know what? Because the son made such a big success of that business, the son must be the father. No, the father is completely separate. He says, you know what? You do this business and, and make money and whatever. Similarly, God Almighty told Jesus, you know, you can, you can make everything else. But that doesn't mean that Jesus is actually gone. And then when the Bible says God created the heavens, it means the fact that technically God is the one that's doing everything because he's the one that gave life to Jesus in the first instance and gave him the ability to do it. So he's technically the one doing it, even if it was someone else's hand that actually did it in a physical way. Then my 14th proof is, would it make sense for God to say in Matthew chapter 3 verses 16 and 17, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased if they're the same person. Imagine if I am announcing myself like this is me in whom I am well pleased. 
I don't think that would make sense. And finally, my 15th proof is the fact that some of Christ's parables would not make sense if Jesus was God. Take, for instance, the parable of the wedding banquet in Matthew chapter 22, verses 1 to 14, where God Almighty, being the king, made a marriage for his son, who is Jesus Christ. Now, would it make sense to say that the king and the son are the same person? So that the king is making a marriage for the son, but the son is the father and the king. So therefore, he's making a marriage for himself, right? Obviously, there's no logic there. Then also Matthew chapter 21, verses 33 to 46, the parable of the husbandman, where the owner of the vineyard is sending his son to see if the husbandman will reverence him. If God is the husbandman, which you can understand by reading Isaiah chapter 5, verses 1 to 7, and then Jesus Christ is the son, then... How can God Almighty be sending himself or Jesus Christ sending himself? We even talked about this earlier. So therefore, based on this and all the other proofs you've looked at, I think it's pretty clear that this theory was a philosophical kind of idea drummed up to try to explain a select few passages in the scriptures, whereas it violates the general story that the scriptures is trying to tell. And you can come up with a thousand more proofs to show that this isn't true simply because scripturally it, it really just doesn't make sense but anyway if you agree with me share your thoughts in the comment section below and if you disagree with me more so so that we can continue talking more about this really big subject right is jesus christ god almighty is a huge subject because we're looking at the identity of the people we serve so it's important that uh, we can agree on what's right and what's wrong. So if you enjoyed this video and like the things that I said, then I'd greatly appreciate if you click the like button and also the subscribe button. And if you want to be notified when I come back with another video, just like the one you're about to finish, you can click the notification bell. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.